inside the car. Get this picture. At only 25 miles per hour, you're traveling through space at more than 36 feet a second. The crash stops the car. But you keep going, smashing against the car's interior. It wasn't until recent years that anyone knew what went on during the split-second duration of an automobile collision. One scientific approach to the problem was begun in 1947, when the state legislature established at the University of California the Institute of Transportation and Traffic Engineering, one of whose tasks is to carry on collision engineering research. The people of the Institute had learned that the study of road accidents after they had happened failed to provide certain essential answers, and so they developed controlled impact experiments. Cars guided by tracks, drawn by tow cables to collide at predetermined speeds and at predetermined points, are beginning to provide answers to some of the previously unanswered collision questions. But the most important question has to do with human safety. In a collision, what happens to the occupants of the car? When the experiments were begun, this in itself posed a serious problem. Who would the occupants be? Here they are, anthropometric dummies. They're more practical than real people for this job because we can insert instruments in their heads, chests, hips, and thighs to learn exactly what stresses, strains, and forces they will face in the secondary collision, the collision inside the car where dummies are damaged and human motorists injured or killed. The only effective means of ensuring that the motorist's forward motion is retarded is the safety seat belt or shoulder harness. Everyone will agree that good brakes are a necessity for any car. Safety seat belts and shoulder harnesses are really brakes for the riders. But motorists who are otherwise careful often neglect something important, the children. To find out what happens to unrestrained children during collisions, lifelike dolls, just about the size and weight of three-year-olds, are included as passengers. Other dolls simulating babies will also ride during various phases of the tests. Now, everything is in readiness, and what you're about to see will be a unique experience. In these experiments, you will see deliberate accidents exactly as they take place. Twenty miles an hour is considered a very moderate speed. But here's what happens when two cars meet at twenty miles an hour. In slow motion, the adults with belts or harness reveal by their motions that strong forces are at work here. While the child, with no restraint, is thrown forward by the impact and may be very seriously injured. At 30 miles an hour, you'd still consider yourself to be driving at a moderate speed, but not through a blind intersection even though you have the right of way. In slow motion photography, the impact situation seems to last minutes instead of a second or less. The fleeting instant during which most of the damage is done. In all of the low-speed crashes, the babies would have been injured to some extent. And in some instances, 
injuries would probably have been critical. The unrestrained child's injuries, in the words of the technical report, were indicated as being critical to fatal. For the little girls, it could have been the prelude to long weeks in the hospital. Or perhaps their last ride forever. We've been talking about accidents occurring at what we might consider moderate speeds. In today's driving, even 40 miles an hour may seem moderate. But a speed of 40 miles per hour through street intersections indicates a reckless disregard for safety and human life. You cannot control the speed or the actions of the other driver, and he may run that stoplight or stop sign. At 40 miles per hour, you're traveling at 59 feet a second, and if suddenly you have only the stationary windshield or some other part of the car's interior to stop you, the inside collision could easily be disastrous. Equally disastrous would be a collision with the pavement if you were thrown out of the car. In the 40 miles per hour experiment, no seat belts were used. And this shows what happens when your car is stopped by a collision and you keep going. At the conclusion of each experimental impact, the long, careful work of data analysis begins. A medical doctor makes an anatomical diagnosis of the damage to each dummy for its suggested relation to human injury pattern. It translates scientific data. But Betsy is more of a poignant reminder that it's always particularly whenever young riders become traffic statistics. At the tights, notes are made and photographs taken of every detail, including skid marks, and even the minor debris of the carefully planned collision. Side impact collisions, sudden and unhappen at any intersection. They're among the most common types of incidents and cause serious injury and death, even when they happen at what we consider moderate speeds. Most of us live in areas where there are corners and cross streets, or cross, and the largest percentage of all automobile accidents happen within 10 miles of home. It's the same route we travel every day, to work, to school, to market. Sometimes we cover the ground several times a day. We're so used to it that we become inattentive. We don't concentrate the way we should. And even though we never go over 25 miles an hour, we're in particular danger at the In urban at the end of each block to do, it doesn't pay to take him for granted. Thousands of the side impact experiments that the one fact and injury, if we do become involved in a collision, is the safety belt. You could wear this precautionary device in all your driving for years and never need it. Then, in one split second, it could save your life or prevent horrible injury or disfigurement. But the most infallible safety factor can't be built into the car, unfortunately. It cannot be purchased as an accessory anywhere. Because the most infallible safety factor is you yourself.
when you devote all of your attention to being a really skilled and careful driver on the streets and at the intersections around home. Or out on the open highway or the superhighway. Whenever your car is in motion and control of the driving situation is in your hands.